a button off my cupcake. All right, guys. The reason why I'm kind of leaning over in this very first clip um, is because on some of my YouTube videos, um, all you see are these right out the gate. I haven't figured out how to adjust that on my screen settings yet, but I will. I will figure that out. Anyways, okay, so we're going to start off with three cupcakes for the tall cupcakes, and now I'm going to stand up, but uh, this will probably, hopefully, alleviate my issue that I have with the beginning of my videos. Okay, so here we go. Uh, you're going to start off with three cupcakes, pre-baked cupcakes, of course. We're going to take them out of their fun little packages, and this is um, really a cool way to get this done. There was another tool that I saw used for this and I couldn't find the tool. So, you know, when you're working in your kitchen, you just get as handy as you can. And you're going to start by just trimming off any overage that you have on your cupcake because you want it to be in the shape of a cylinder. So more like this. Okay. And we'll go ahead. I'll get back to those in a second, but this is the cool part. This is a uh, number uh, 4B Wilton tube, and here is your cupcake, and all you do, you can do it on either side, it doesn't matter where you start, you just take it and you press it all the way through, and what it's going to do is create a hole in your cupcake. This is where we're going to fill this uh, tall cupcake, so um, you'll do that and you'll go ahead and do it with all three of your cupcakes and then we'll start filling it. Okay, so now that you've got all of your um, holes cut out in your cupcakes, you're going to take your pastry bag and, um, you know, if you don't have a uh, featherweight bag, just go ahead and grab some parchment paper or a uh, plastic bag, whatever you like to use, whatever your weapon of choice is. And um, we're going to go ahead and fill the centers of these. We're also going to create a small little uh, cap on the top. You can just squish it down. It doesn't have to be perfect. And just go ahead and keep filling. And this is going to puzzle piece this together. All right, guys, call me crazy, but I wanted to do this just to show um, that you have options. If you don't have a turntable at home and you don't want to go out and invest the money in one yet, if you're just getting started as a cake decorator, um, you can get really creative with things that you might have around the house, such as a, uh, an oatmeal can. And then maybe if you've just got a, a, a thin uh, board, whatever you can find to use to, to work uh, your product. So you can just, you know, use this as a turntable. It's not the best one in the world, but it's something that um, will work in a pinch. And trust me, I have decorated full wedding cakes on my husband's uh, drum stand, his, his symbols for, for his... Uh, is a stand for his symbols when I've forgotten my turntable. So uh, use your ingenuity and uh, creativity. All right, so we're going to go ahead and ice this um, cupcake. It's going to be kind of like a dry ice. And be a little bit um, careful when you're doing this because this is not real sturdy. Your uh, cupcake isn't yet. It will be because we're after we ice this, we're going to freeze it. So uh, what we'll do now is... You know, you can just use your, your star tip tool to get it started, all right? And then just dry ice this sucker. We're not going to put a lot of icing on it. It's going to be thin. It's called, this is actually called a uh, crumb icing. So what it does is it's going to hold all those crumbs in place as it dries, or excuse me, as it freezes up. Um, or even, you can even just stick it in the refrigerator if you want to but you just want to get a nice thin coating on here. Um, of course, you can use other tools to get this done. If you've got the wide um, icing tool, that helps a little bit better. But just for right now, we're going to crumb ice this guy. And uh, we'll get the top of it also. You don't have to worry about the bottom of it, but you know, all this, again, all this is doing is it's just uh, holding everything in place for when we get ready to go decorate this bad boy. All right, so go ahead and finish uh, crumb icing it. Get it as smooth on the sides as you can. Um, we're going to come back and we're going to give it one more go after this uh, firms up, after it stiffens up. So I'm going to pop this in the uh, freezer real quick and let it get nice and hard on the icing. And 
Then we'll come back and we will finish this guy. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I put the second layer of buttercream icing over the crumb coating that we just did and I popped it back in the refrigerator for about 45 minutes just so that the, the icing has a nice solidity to it. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to take some homemade rolled fondant and we're going to dress this tall cupcake in some rolled fondant and then we'll put the fun little uh, decorative pieces on it. So let's get uh, going on that right now. All right, so now we're going to take some rolled fondant. This is where it's going to get fun. We're going to get to enrobe our tall cupcake. And what you'll want to do is you'll measure your cupcake. Now, the measurements in my cupcake are about 9 inches in circumference. So we're going to go 9 inches in length and about 4 inches in height. Your dimensions may vary. So you can get just like a regular um, measuring tape. A seamstress tape usually works the best. Uh, that's my suggestion. Okay, so I've got my nine inches in length. I'll just do a little press there. And I'm going to go four inches in width. And I'm just going to take my pizza cutter. And you may need to use some kind of a, a, a guide um, marked off. We're also going to make a round piece of fondant to go on the top. So I actually want that piece to go on before I put the other piece on. And here's a really cool little tip for you. You can just use a, uh, a cutter. This is a, um, it's not actually a cutter, it's a lid. It's a lid from Instant Coffee. So we'll discard this. And just by eyeballing my cupcake, I know it's a little bit. Okay, so now we've got our pieces to put this together. So. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now I've got my top piece on. You just kind of lightly press it on, maybe wrap it down the sides just a little bit, and then you'll go ahead and take your other piece of fondant. If you have ran short at the bottom of it, like I just did, um, that's okay. Just make sure that the top is as close as you can. We're going to put, um, you know, a little ribbon embellishment that's going to hide any of these imperfections so we're okay here and we go you just wrap it around real nice real simple and then anything that you have in excess uh, you'll go ahead and either take a very sharp blade or an exacto knife whatever is your tool of weapon and then make that seam in the back side as um, you know straight as you possibly can and we can together a little bit now, if you find that your seams are not coming together that you, the way you want them to, then just put some uh, cool decorations over. Uh, where okay, so now I've measured out um, my nine inches in length. And um, again, I'm just gonna cut out two strips of this. And one's gonna be for the top side of the cupcake and the other will be obviously for the bottom level of it. You can make these as wide as you want. It doesn't really matter. It's all up to you and your own creativity on what you do here, guys. All right, so I'm going to take that. And this, we're going to reserve some of this to make those cute little leaves. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. So we'll go ahead and we'll wrap these around the cupcake. And let me put this down here real quick, right in front of you. See how close I can get it. There you go. And try and line up all your seams on the back side here. You may have to mess with it to get it to stand up straight. It might move a little bit on you while you're working with it. So you just take it, you'll wrap it around like so. Easy peasy, right? You can just actually pinch the end of that off. That worked out beautifully. There you go. Way cool. That looks awesome. Okay, so now we'll do the bottom of it. Wrapped around it. And I'll show you this also. You can use a mini cupcake liner just to sit your um, tall cupcake on. And it fits 
perfectly for these. I love those little things. They're just the, you know, little mini uh, cupcake or tea tassy or uh, candy papers. So those things work really well. All right, so now we're gonna make the little leaves. And this is really simple. Again, with the, the green food coloring. And basically, you'll just take a little bit of it and I am pretty sure you'll be able to see this and you'll pinch it in your fingers and just do a little point at the top. Just make a little point with your fingers. Okay. So it almost looks like a raindrop and then either you with your, uh, if you've got thumbnails, <laughs> you can use that to uh, create little indents or you can use a stick. These are my favorite sticks in the world. They're just wooden skewers. That's all these are. You can use that to press in. So you'll, you'll notice in a lot of cases, you won't see me using a lot of fancy schmancy type of tools. You'll see me using uh, things that are really easy to get a hold of. And then you're going to be placing these on your cupcake. Now, what is the best way to get fondant to stick to fondant? You can either use a little bit of uh, sugar water or just plain old fashioned tap water. So I'm going to put some water, just a little bit on the, the back side of this and we're going to press it on here just like so. Now in order to make sure that it sticks again with my cute little stick that I like, I just kind of press it in a little bit. We're also going to have a piece of, um, you know, the little red hot candies. That's what's going to be the center of the poinsettia. So we'll keep working with that until we've got three leaves and then um, we will finish this off. Okay guys, so to take, um, to put the little uh, red hot in the center, I just take just the tiniest little bit of buttercream icing just so I know it's going to hold together. If you don't have a red hot, you can just use a piece of uh, red fondant, just roll it up in a little ball. And actually the red fondant uh, may work better for you because then you can do the, the three little uh, holly berries inside of it. But I just love red hots. I think they're so pretty and shiny. All right, so that's how you create the poinsettia leaf. And then now what we can do very quickly, I'll do this because I know this video is running way too long, is you'll just take the end of this dowel rod or whatever it is you like to work with and you'll um, you know, kind of poke some little holes all the way around the bottom of this just so that you've got that indent and then you'll stick your um, either your red hots or your handmade berries from roll fondant in those so me and my red hots you'll see me use a lot of these through the holidays I absolutely love them that is if I can get a hold of them they get a little bit tricky to work with guys Okay, so just go ahead and you'll continue all the way around and you will have your finished product. And then also you can do some more on top, whatever you want to do with this. This is how you make the tall cupcakes. I know this video was extremely long, but I wanted to make sure I gave you as much as I possibly could on it. Okay, we will see you in the next video. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to give me a, uh, email me or leave a comment at the bottom of this video. That always, uh, helps uh, people find me too. Okay. All right. We will see you on the next video. For more great ideas, visit decoratedcupcakeideas.com.